Hi everybody, good morning. This is uh, Monday morning. It's a beautiful day. Sun is coming up and uh, it's going to be a great day. We had the most phenomenal day yesterday at the opening of our new church. Well, it was the first service that we had in it. We're still going to have a great celebration in time to come when everybody's able to be back and the restrictions are completely lifted. But uh, right now we're just celebrating just uh, all that God has done and to Him be the glory for allowing us the privilege of being a part of this and just for the way he's provided in the most amazing miraculous way for the building of our facility here we're so grateful thanks to those who came but it's devotional time it's uh, monday morning and uh, we're moving out of the book of genesis now we've looked at a number of the people who passed and failed certain tests through the book of genesis and we're now into the book of exodus exodus means exit or getting out of you see, what had happened at the end of the book of Genesis is that Jacob, as the ruler of one of the rulers of Egypt, had his whole family in the place. But over the course of time, the whole Israelite nation began to grow, and Jacob was the father of this great, great nation. And by the time the Exodus took place, there was something like three million Jewish people in Egypt. That's a huge contribution towards the growth of the population. And the king there became, uh, Pharaoh became very threatened. They didn't know, forgot all about Jacob. And he was very threatened by the Jewish people. But for some strange reason that God has obviously purpose, and we can talk about that, there was about 400 years of silence from God. God didn't speak through anybody, nothing miraculous we know of happened. And the people began to sort of think to themselves, we wonder if this God of Jacob is still around. Maybe he was just a, a figment of our, of our father, or our great-grandfather's, great-great-grandfather's imagination. Maybe what we've been thinking about has just been some kind of urban legend. But the people began to question. But there was 400 and something years of silence from God. Now, I don't know about you, but silence always makes me nervous. Silence is, is, a, is a horrible thing sometimes if there's tension between somebody and somebody's paying, playing the passive aggressive role and you want to fix this thing and silence can be an absolute killer. But it, whatever the reason was that God was silent and there are some theories we will talk about, but uh, just think about silence in the context of our lives. Why is God silent sometimes? Some people say, well, I never hear from God. I don't know where God is. Is he still around? Is he still alive? Is he still interested? And they begin to ask all sorts of questions. Well, let me give you one reason for now that God might be silent. You know, in the game of rugby here in South Africa, we have this fantastic game. If you infringe and are penalized on the field bad enough, a penalty can be given against you. And if that penalty or infringement on your behalf is bad enough, you get yellow carded. And you have to go and sit in what they call the sin bin for 10 minutes and you're off the field. If your infringement is that bad that you have to be red carded, you don't get to come back on the field and the team will play with one less person. I sometimes wonder, and I don't want to over-humanize this thing, but I sometimes wonder if God isn't a little bit like that, where we mess up, sin comes into our lives. We all know that God is holy, that He cannot look upon sin, and yet we sometimes feel God is distant, and the reason is that we have moved. God has not moved. He's still there. We have moved. And sin has once again come between us and God, causing this silence. But the beauty of God is that He never read cards anybody. He never writes you off completely from the game. There's always people who, who think, well, God's forgotten me. I messed up so badly that there's no ways I can get forgiven or get back in the game again. Well, that's just not true. If somebody tells you that, then they don't obviously haven't read their Bible very well. But God will sometimes yellow card somebody to say, you know what, you need to take out of the game for a period of time. Maybe it's a period of reflection so that you can think about what you've done. Maybe it's a period where God says, I have to withdraw my presence from you in that sort of sense by moving you to the side. But the beauty of a yellow card is it's only a yellow card. After 10 minutes, you get invited to get back in the game. And uh, that, that's the beauty of the yellow card, that even though you may infringe, even though you may mess up, God will never write you off. There's always a time to get back in the game. 
even if your card is a red one, God will never write you off completely. There's always a beautiful invitation home. Just have a look at scripture and you see how many times the Israelites infringed, were penalized, were yellow carded, and yet God got them back in the game. Think of the New Testament of the stories Jesus told, the parable of the, of the prodigal son. Man, he, man, that kid to me really red carded. And God yet brought him back and said, no, 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 it's only a yellow card. You'll sit in the sin bin for a little while, but there will one day come back an invitation to get back in the game. Now, I don't know, people, but maybe today you're looking at that and saying, well, you know, people don't know what I've done, but God knows. And he knows that I may well have messed up. And you're invited today. The beauty of this new week, the beauty of a new day is to say to you that God is inviting you back into the game. Don't sit on the sideline too long. Don't sit on the sideline and sulk. That is the worst thing that you can do. Get back in the game of God because that's the way God operates. So I hope that this will be useful to you. Go and think about it and get back in the game if you're sitting on the sideline. Remember, no red cards with God, only yellow ones. Thanks, guys. Go and think about that for today. And we're going to apply it to the tests of the nation of Israel. And one of my greatest heroes, Moses, is going to be the subject of much talking about over the course of the next month. But go and have a great day, guys. And uh, we'll see you soon. Bye.